All right, my country, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I call it to your time, Zoom. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have come back to MC Potoski Talk Show here yeah, on YouTube, where you get the latest news and entertainment around the world. If it's your first time on this great platform where we react to all videos that comes our way, please consider to subscribe and Put on your thumb bell, and if you love what we do on this great platform, why don't you give us a thumbs up and also share this video? I appreciate all my subscribers. We got Almighty, we bless you guys. And if you have anything to say about this video, you can also drop your comment at the comment section, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, without wasting more time, guys, let's dive into this video. Services says it has unraveled the plot to force an interim government in Nigeria. The security agency says the plan is meant to promote mass protest, undermine civil rule, and plunge the country into crisis. Rise correspondent Benga Shiru looks at the implication of an interim government as President Muhammad Dubari continues with plans for a successful transition. Just like any political transition, there are winners and losers. While the 2023 presidential election ended with Senator Bola Tinumbu declared the president-elect, the election has left ripples of disenchantment of allegations of electoral fraud, questioning the sanctity of the ballot. In the days to come, the supporters of the obedient movement and the article campaign group have taken to the streets to express their misgivings about the electoral process. The president-elect's move to extend the olive branch did little or nothing to douse attention. The opposition parties are now at daggers draw. Not relenting on their demand for justice, the legal fireworks also commenced to seek redress. With the uneasy political atmosphere rising to a fever pitch, Failing speculations that may put the expected smooth sail of the president-elect to the top seat of power on May 29th under threats, like the coming to be of a worst nightmare. The latest threat alert from the Department of State Services claims to have uncovered plot to foist an interim government on the nation, once again putting the nation's transition under pressure. If by sheer accident the co-plotters of this interim agenda succeed in their plots, the obvious implications of this arrangement will no doubt set a delicate precedent with a strong reminder of the 1993 interim government set up by the former military dictator, General Ibrahim Babangida. The big question is, what does the interim arrangement portend for the nation's democracy? How would posterity preserve this plot as the nation stands at the threshold of another political transition? Binga Ashiru. Arise News. Dr. Bati, a lot to piece together on this. Yeah, I recall writing a piece on this uh, even before the election, mm. uh, at the back page of this day, when some people were, be, were beginning at the time to engage in what is called a whispering campaign about the possibility of an interim government. But what has now happened is that we had elections February 25, uh, and also March 18. And as a result of the process on February 25, the legal body, constitutionally approved body, the Independent National Electoral Commission, released the result, declaring the presidential candidate of the uh, All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as president-elect on the basis of its own collation and the results arising from that uh, process. What the law provides for is for people who are aggrieved to go to the presidential election tribunal, which has happened. With four political parties going to that tribunal, anything outside of that is not recognized by the Constitution. Those who talk about interim national government should be reminded that that was what happened under the military government, the Babangida administration creating an interim national government that lasted a total of about 83 days. And even under the military, uh, you know, that was declared an illegality 
uh, you know, by the courts of law. So to talk about an interim national government at this time would, as the Department of State Security is arguing, would be a, a piece of illegality, would be unconstitutional, will amount, to use the phrase of the Department of State Security, to subversion, or, as they went further, will amount to treasonable felony. The Department of State Security, speaking through Dr. Peter Afanaya, uh, who is the spokesperson of uh, that uh, agency of government, says it will not fold its arms. That persons who are trying to subvert the democratic process will be brought to book. And that the Department of State Security will not hesitate to go after those persons that this agency has placed under its watch, that the agency is monitoring. So that's a very clear message from the Department of uh, State Security. However, there have been reactions. The reactions first from the APC, which naturally, uh, speaking through uh, Idris, the uh, Deputy uh, uh, Publicity Secretary spokesman, strategic spokesman, saying that, look, he has uh, Idris, speaking for the party, will encourage the uh, Department of State Security to go ahead and arrest anybody. The PDP also, speaking through Abdullahi, you know, also a spokesperson of the party, has also said, yes, the Department of State Security should go against anybody who is introducing, arguing, recommending subversion in whatever form. The only party that is a bit... Uh, you know, critical of the intervention of the Department of State Security, who seem to be the Labour Party. Speaking through Dr. Yunus Atanko, Dr. Atanko says, and I think what he says should be noted, he's not saying the DSS should not do his job, but he's saying, where was the DSS when Labour Party supporters and members were being attacked in Lagos State? When people were saying certain persons of a certain ethnic extraction should not be allowed to vote. That, okay, so why is the uh, Department of State Security waking up just now to say, oh, you know, some people are trying to subvert the May 29 inauguration uh, process. I think the Department of State Security should take special notice of that line because it's a question of saying the Department of State Security cannot sh choose and pick when it wants to be proactive, when it wants to act, not it's not an agency that should act for political purposes to serve the interests of a particular group, but it should be an agency of government, an institution of government that should serve everybody's purpose to ensure security, to ensure peace and order. Uh, that is where we are in, in, you know, in terms of this uh, issue, but an interim government is nowhere in the constitution of Nigeria. Even the uh, doctrine of necessity that some people talk about, you know, was just a political convenience. And we're not in a military dispensation. Every agency of state has a responsibility to protect the integrity of the democratic process. I think it's pure and simple to say this. Let's perish the idea of any interim government. We cannot go back to the June 12 days. We all know what happened to Nigeria that time. We all know how we became even an international pariah. We all saw the effect of what it did to the image of Nigeria. And the court of law said, no, it is an illegality. It shouldn't have even happened then. We can't go back to those days. That's number one. Number two, in reading the DSS statement, yes, the DSS have looked at it, seen it, identified the plot. But, you know, they said three things that some people will go to the court to go get some injunctions. To a large extent, I feel people have a right to go to court. Is it that the DSS does not trust the judicial process? It says getting frivolous injunctions. I want them to expatiate further on that. It said in protest, people will force, you know, protest in such a way that it will cause chaos across the country and there will be a declaration of this. No. People have a right to peaceful protest. And across party lines, everybody has been protesting. We saw APC protesters in Abuja called the natives protesting in support 
of Bola Ahmed Tinubu and saying, oh, the mandate is theirs. Even saying further that, hey, people should also congratulate the candidates. We've seen Labour Party members. We've seen PDP protesting across the country. This is a constitutional right for people to be able to protest peacefully. And also, it's also part of their right to be able to go to court. It is the court that determines the injunction that they give to anybody, be it frivolous or not. And that's why we keep calling our judiciary process to do better. Thirdly, in all of this, the DSSS is seeing some political actors. We want the DSS to act on it because we want the safety and security of our country. And the peaceful transfer of power is what heralds every democracy. But, like the you know, different political parties have stated, one part we should ask the DSS about strongly is the fact that when threats were made in Lagos, what did the DSS do about it? That's a very fundamental question. Because we forget in a hurry what happened in Lagos. MCO Luoma made threats and those threats came to be. They were not just empty threats. And the position that was taken by the police chief was the fact that, oh, MC Oloma had come out to do a video that he was just joking. But apart from that video, I mean, that we should take it as a joke, that he was just joking with Mamachu Kudi. But apart from that video, let's not forget that there was widespread violence as threatened Hitler too in the video. So the question is, the DSS should be holistic enough to be able to, you know, look at all political parties and make its own judgments. It should not be seen as picking and choosing. We should say that and restate that boldly. Because I've also been seeing some level of triumphalism. Hitherto, the DSS picked up somebody when a message on coup was put out there. And that same person is now saying that, oh, when I said it that time, uh, they said, oh, they vilified me of some sort. But now they see that I was saying the, the, the truth, that I saw it and all of that. The truth has to be told. The DSS should also go further by trying to rein in those that are heating up the polity. We have seen many tweets released in recent times. And the DSS should not just take this. It's not just make general speeches that say, oh, all political actors should pipe things down. They should go one step further. But, please, elections have been won and lost. The next process is to go to court. All we can do is to call on the judiciary to ensure justice. And that's what we want. People also have a right to peacefully protest. But when the court make their decision, we should also remember that the collective development of our country should be our priority. We should not plunge ourselves to chaos like is currently happening in Kenya. That even after the court has ruled, there's been protests. Only last week, members of Azimio decided to stomp on the state house. And that has brought about many reprisal actions in Kenya as we speak today. We do not want that. We want peace for the growth and the development of our country. But we must also be fair to one another, give people the chance to air their views, and let everybody settle things out because we want a great country called Nigeria. Thank you for watching that video. We appreciate. And this is where I'll be leaving you guys. But if this is your first time on this great channel, please do it to subscribe and put on your notification bell so that whenever we upload any video for this great channel you will be the first person to see the video so guys see you guys some other time